Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, Attorney Savania DeBarros. Hi, this is Savani DeBarros, Protector of Athletes, and I have the amazing Coach Stuart Hart with us today. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So tell us a little bit about who you are. All right. Uh, Stuart Hart, strength and conditioning coach here at the University of Nebraska. Uh, women's basketball, been here for three years, uh, going into my fourth season, God willing. I've uh, been a strength, in the strength and conditioning game at the NCAA level for 13 years. Uh, did D2 high school, mid-major D1, and now I'm at a power five. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So You've been coaching for a good while now, and I know that you've probably seen your athletes transition in different phases, you know, coming in as a freshman, then being there as a current player, and then transitioning on to possibly professional league or just going to the corporate world. Um, So tell us or share with us a little bit about what you've done to implement certain training tactics um, or mentorship with your athletes so that they can become the best person outside of the athlete realm that they can be? Yeah, the uh, best way to answer that question, honestly, is uh, if I just share how I got into the business. Uh, and then I could kind of give you some background in regards okay. to how, you know, my life has changed and how coaching has affected my life overall. Um, got a, I'm originally from Toronto, Canada and got a Division II scholarship uh, at the St. Leo uh, College at the time. Uh, so I moved down to the States from Canada. My parents moved with me, uh, had a subpar college experience. I definitely enjoyed my high school experience uh, a little, a, a lot better than college. Mm-hmm. Uh, got into the professional world, dabbled in sales, was in the mortgage and mark, uh, sorry, real estate business for about five or six, close to seven years, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, partnership with my brother. So we used to uh, buy homes, rehab, flip houses. And then I ended up transitioning into the mortgage business. So I started working for a mortgage company, worked uh, for about a year and a half to two years with a mortgage company, and then ended up opening my own mortgage co- mortgage business, which helped both my brother and I on the real estate side as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously the crash of 2008, and that <laughs> caused me to have to pivot, if you yes. will, in a different career. So I kind of saw the writing on the wall and started getting into personal training, was always into fitness, mm-hmm. um, even obviously as an athlete. And then after get, getting out of, co- out of college, you know, you always stayed fit and always seemed to have the people in my neighborhood wanted to come work out with me. So I ended uh-huh. up... Uh, <laughs> Getting into personal training, um, my brother at the time he had also pivoted into MMA and doing mixed martial arts oh, and interesting. boxing. So I was training him, training other people in his fight camp, training people who were sponsoring the athletes, i.e., mm-hmm. lawyers and uh, doctors, uh, lawyers and doctors' wives. So a lot of you know general population. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got an opportunity to train the then coach of my alma mater on the women's side, uh, Coach Oles. And helped her basically lose a bunch of weight over the summer. And then she had basically told me, have you ever thought about training college athletes? Which at the time, I didn't even know was a career choice. I was strictly focused on just the personal training and gen pop side of the business. Right. Uh, After doing some research (laughs) and and, and looking at the dollar signs behind some of the coaches that are in the strength and conditioning world, uh, this this would be a good career for me to get into. So I got an opportunity to kind of go back to my alma mater, start the strength and conditioning program. And kind of uh, just going back to your original question, uh, when I got into the business, I thought it was just going to be, you know, sets, reps, how much weight. uh, And I never did I realize the impact the athletes would have had on my life and the relationship Mm -hmm. that I would have fostered with the athletes over the course of a now 13 year career. Uh, So it's been cool to, you know, know that you were an influence in their life at one point in time an influence mm-hmm. that they valued and the relationships have stayed through time, you know, to the point where you get text messages on father's day. I don't have children. And see, but, that's so, but, but you are a father <laughs> figure. <laughs> yep. See, that's uh, amazing. I mean, yeah, that's a so. benefit to the job that you didn't know came with the job. <laughs> didn't know I came with the job. So uh, it's been awful. And, and then again, I got my start on the women's side. So, 
as an assistant coach. I was doing volunteer assistant at the same time as doing strength and conditioning. So I got the opportunity to, you know, again, work with the basketball athletes, not just in the weight room, but also on the court, traveling, going to games, going out there, recruiting, building mm-hmm. relationships with families. So I've had pretty, a, a pretty wide experience just from the standpoint of not only just in the weight room, but un- understanding the coaching side of it and the X's and O's and the recruiting and, and, and even from an administration standpoint, how they view, you know, you know, the field and the career and, and the choices they have to make. Right, right. That, I mean, that's a beautiful story of, of how you even started and now where you are and how you've impacted uh, so many athletes through the years, but you talked a, a little bit about having to pivot even at the time of the market crash. Cause I remember when all that was going down, people were just losing their houses like crazy. And then people who worked in the real estate industry, I mean, it was, it was hard. Yeah. To sell um, homes at the time. You find the, yeah. The hardest hit States were obviously, you know, warmer weather States of Florida, California, mm-hmm. Arizona. I was in Florida at the time. Uh, Market was great when it was hot, but then when yep. it crashed, it was, you know, everything came crumbling down. So I've, I've always, my, you know, my parents are West Indian, so I grew up with a pretty, you know, strict household and, you know, you make the most of what you got. So, right. you know, it was buckle Absolutely. up your boots, you know, pull up your boots and strap them up and yep. figure out and what you the figure, next house You is. figure it out. Yeah, you figure uh, it out. So. Even right now, so we're dealing with this pandemic. And I, God, I feel like it's just not going to go away anytime soon. But, you know, we've had so many, um, you know, like the Big East Conference and other conferences are canceling their sports. Um, and, and I believe more so just for the safety and health of their athletes. But it's causing, especially some of these athletes who are seniors and who are trying to basically pitch themselves for the pros. Um, they're having to find a different way to try and pivot now in right. their craft so sure. that they can be seen. So can you talk a little bit about COVID-19 and the impact that it's having on college athletics, um, especially around the training environment? For sure. Um, one of the beautiful things I'd like to say is that, you know, here at the University of Nebraska, we just have such a... a, a um, uh, the resources here are just plentiful. So from the standpoint that, you know, we've got the medical personnel, obviously, we've got athletic training, we've got strength and conditioning, we've got sports psychology, I mean, down to sports nutrition. Uh, and all of these, you know, different areas are able to come together, collaborate, have conversations, you know, what the athlete experience should be, what we'd like it to be. And then taking COVID-19 you know, into consideration, you know, at the college level, everything pretty much came to a cease um uh in march basically the middle of march yeah with the nba canceling their season that pretty much it it happened at a time where you know most college basketball athletes were in some sort of postseason play whether it was conference tournaments or waiting for a bid to the ncaa tournament right so it all came down at the same time so our athletes were basically you know the 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 mandate came down that you know all postseason play was being canceled conference tournaments were being canceled and then basically within a day or two you know, individual campuses were making their decision in regards to shutting down in-person classes, Mm -hmm. going to uh, a a more of an online format. So for us at that time, we just made the decision, our coaching staff made the decision, uh, okay, our athletes had the option to go home because we couldn't do anything on the court. Obviously, postseason was finished uh, and it wasn't safe to take them into a weight room environment either. So our athletes Mm -hmm. went home basically about March 16th uh, and at During that time, you know, a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of conversations, keeping in touch with them, letting them know kind of, you know, what was going on, what, as best we knew it at the time, because it was obviously a very fluid situation. Right. Um, But we've had our athletes back on campus since about the third or fourth, third week in May, moving into the beginning of June. Uh, And we've been, you know, basically training and kind of operating as best we can on the the rules and guidelines uh, set forth Mm -hmm. by the NCAA. Uh, and also trying to keep our athletes safe um, right. here on campus. So, you know, we've been managing COVID. Obviously, it's, again, fluid. So, you know, in the news recently, you're hearing, you know, football has now made the decision, you know, at the NCAA and at the different conference levels that it's not safe to have fall sports. So, mm-hmm. again, we're, you know, 
using our team here at Nebraska and, you know, what's, what's the, you know, the, the anxiety that our athletes might be feeling and how do we approach that conversation? You know, yeah. is it affecting their sleep? Is it, you know, what, what do we need to speak about in the weight room environment? What do we sp- need to speak about before practice, after practice? You know, how do we give our athletes an opportunity to kind of vent and or ask the questions that, you know, may be top of mind for them. So it's obviously, Again, fluid. We're trying to do the best we can. Um, but what's beautiful is, uh, you know, it's not something I've got to do by myself. Right. Or our coaching staff has to do it by myself. We have a support team around us. And that's the beauty of, of really having a whole team built in, you know, to the organization because it definitely helps you to take those bits and pieces of, of struggles that these athletes are having and be able to come with the holistic uh, viewpoint of what you can do to make sure that they can get through this but also gain an entire benefit or opportunity out of the situation also. Yeah. What's been interesting is just even uh, the athletes, again, I've been doing this for quite some time. So I've got a lot of athletes who are, you know, they playing professional ball overseas Mm -hmm. uh, in whichever countries. And obviously those leagues have also been impacted. They've been, you know, not allowed to play or participate and they've been now sent back home. So what's been cool is honestly just having those same, those athletes reach out to me and ask, you know, coach, what are you guys doing? You know, where you're at, like, what, what are you guys doing to keep your athletes engaged? And what can I be doing at home? You know, if I don't have access, depending on what state I'm from, I don't have access to a weight room, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, what kind of workouts can I do at home? So again, what's been cool is just, again, that constant communication, even with your current athletes, your past athletes, and then being able to give them, you know, real, real time. Hey, here's what we're doing now. <laughs> here's the programs that we're putting in place. Here are the conversations we're having with our athletes and being able to share that with them as well. Right. Right. And, you know, um, so you're, you're currently at a college D one, uh, in Nebraska, and there's a lot of conversation that's been happening since 2019 about name image likeness. For sure. And, um, so it's been, it's a great conversation. I love it because, I feel like athletes have, should have been able to own their own name, image, and likeness and be able to profit from that for years now. Um, we know a lot of things have been happening under the table prior to anyway, so uh, why not just make it legit? Because a lot of these athletes who um, are getting D1 scholarships are, in my opinion, mostly from Black and Brown communities. And from what I've seen, some of the punishments that have happened where some of these athletes have gotten caught taking, you know, gifts or bribes or whatever on the table, they have also been black and brown. Um, So what opportunities can or are out there, especially for black and brown athletes who maybe they're finding themselves in a situation now, they're missing an entire season. Maybe they don't have the time to actually red shirt to, be able to come back for another season, how can they leverage right now their name, image, and likeness, or what can they do, or what opportunities are available for these athletes post-college? Yeah, um, again, being at Nebraska has definitely been an eye-opening experience for me. Obviously, you're at a Power 5 institution um, here in the state of Nebraska. You know, the University of Nebraska in all sports is pretty much the main show. Mm -hmm. Um, The support fan base is just crazy. One of the craziest I've ever seen in the country. Um, And for all sports, not just basketball, not just football, our, our volleyball games, our standing room only day of game. Um, I've never seen that for sports. Our baseball teams, our, our, our volleyball teams, uh, sorry, soccer teams, they're, they're all very – down to our bowling team is, you know, <laughs> their sports are attended. Um, but to your point of name, image, likeness, what, I, what, what I'd really like to allude to is the fact that Nebraska is trying to be at the forefront of that. Uh, we've actually partnered with a company, and forgive me, I don't know the name of it. Um, but uh, we've partnered with a company that is, you know, going through – and again, um, if I speak out of turn here, it's it's out. It's more out of my area. Um, but they're going through their social media accounts, and they're trying to help our athletes understand, you know, what their social media presence is worth, uh, and the kind of money that they can probably generate, you know, mm-hmm. if if they wanted to, uh, by partnering partnering with businesses within the community. And I guess right. the point I'm, sure I'm more trying to allude to is at least here at Nebraska, because we are the only show in town. You know, our athletes, whether it's football, basketball, volleyball. It really doesn't matter the sport. You know, if they maintain a proper, you know, or positive social media profile, 
Uh, obviously, if they're successful on the court, it could stand to, to mean dollars for them while they're in college. Um, now, to your question, you know, what it's like outside of college, I think what's great about the college experience is you get to learn what are the proper ways to manage yourself, not only as an athlete on the court, but your training. And now we're now we're now shifting into, OK, how do you actually generate dollars for, right. you know, as a professional out there? And, and dealing with media and, and how, how you operate yourself within the media, how that can affect, you know, dollar signs down the line from a marketing standpoint. And, you know, again, with Nebraska, again, I just feel like we're doing an excellent job. Yeah. Um, one of the best jobs in the country that I've seen, because, you know, again, I speak in a network with, you know, other strength coaches and other coaches uh, from both basketball and football. And, you know, I don't necessarily hear them talking about, you know, those same presenting those same types of opportunities for their athletes. And again, it's new, you know, uh, they yeah, have, it's really new. Uh, yeah. it is, is now pivoting and allowing these opportunities for our athletes. It wasn't my experience as a college athlete. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting to see where it's going to go. But I just feel like, you know, we're doing a great job here, you know, with the teams that I've seen and, you know, the organization that we partnered with. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't have the name of that company. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, I'm I'm actually glad, though, that a lot of a lot of states and schools are being proactive about this. You know, even if they haven't, the state itself hasn't passed legislation. These these colleges know that it's, it's coming, you know, and why not go ahead and start preparing the students um, to be successful on that, because if, if they don't, there's going to be a huge conflict because now, I mean, you technically have, uh, entrepreneurs, right. you know, on For teams sure. and they For have sure. to be able to have hard skills to manage all of that. Plus still manage school work and show up for practice and games. And the time, you know, we always make the the point, you know, the things that we learn, you know, and again, you know, I've, I've got a bachelor's and a master's, so I'm not speaking ill of, 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 of uh, uh, you know, the college education, but we always make the point, do we really teach our athletes or do we really teach our students what the survival skills are for, for living real life outside of college and, you know, in the real world, you know, right. can you balance a checkbook? Can you, you know, right. <laughs> you know, do you know how to right. start a business? Do you know how to, you know, file your taxes? Like these are real exactly. world things that you're going to have to learn. So what's cool, you know, especially being a former college athlete, knowing what my experience was being a coach, uh, knowing what that experience was and now, you know, being a support staff, but also just seeing how the NCAA and how the college athlete experiences just changed and improved. Mm-hmm. You know, we've all we've all seen the stories of athletes who make it, you know, they make it to the whatever professional league. And, you know, within five years after retirement, they've lost all of their yep. money. Well, you know, were they really educated on how to handle you know, the, the large sums of money that they can get right. uh, when they step off of the college, um, you know, playing field or court uh, and, and into the professional ranks, you, you know, it's no longer about, you know, what sneakers I'm wearing or, you know, um, what the logo is. It's now, okay, I can pick which logo I want to go with and how much are they going to pay me? Right. Uh, you know, yeah. how I operate myself in whatever city I happen to be, you know, well, what marketing dollars can I make, you know, by just being a, you know, a positive image. Uh, so it's cool to just see that education being given at the college level because more often than not, they don't get it until they get to the league. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why we definitely, we need coaches like you who are, you know, in the middle schools in pop Warner having conversations, of course, for the level of where the athletes are, um, to start these conversations and make sure that these children have a background of information and knowledge that is a foundation. So when they when they are in college, it's not something new that they just heard and it will help them along the way. Um, so you, coach, are making history in Nebraska. You're <laughs> currently the only Division I collegiate strength coach in the whole state of Nebraska. How did that happen? Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't know it. <laughs> My athletic <laughs> trainer is the one I- you know what happened? Um, obviously, with everything going on here in the United States, Black Lives Matter movement, I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just the name. experience of the you know black male, if you will, yeah. with police enforcement or the police department, uh, the recent deaths, killings, murders, however you want to you know put it. Um, it's, it's opened up a lot of conversations within organizations, whether they be business organizations, whether it be, you know, within higher education uh, and conversations just between, you know, general folks like, you know, 
you got black friends, white friends, brown friends, you know, I, I, it's on the media. You don't have a choice. You got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So you're having conversations. And then in that, in those conversations here, uh, my athletic trainer uh, had done some research and, you know, obviously we're in Nebraska, the Nebraska university system, obviously there's some D twos and some lower level schools, but you know, the university of Nebraska is the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and within the Nebraska system, and more more than that, just all uh, co- higher higher education, college athletics. Myself and Ashley, sorry, my athletic trainer, were the only um, people of color or you know African Americans uh, in in positions of strength and conditioning and athletic training. So uh, it became a topic of conversation just within our own staff and then within our own department, uh, and you know, our athletes have, have shared their viewpoints, their experiences to the, to the institution and how much of a difference it has made to have that representation. Uh, so little did I know I was coming out here to set history. <laughs> <laughs> but you did, you did. And it's, it's awesome. You know, it's, it's a sad thing um, in hindsight because you would hope that um, African-Americans or um, people of color and different ethnicities would be in positions um, where we represent a, a, a high percentage, you know, of teams or whatever it is. Um, but it's also a great thing to know that there is movement, there is yeah. change that's being made. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited for you and I'm very happy that you are able to be out that way and representing for the group of minorities so that they can feel like someone is listening to them and understand them. So I definitely, uh, definitely appreciate it. Uh, let me also clarify. I'm not the first. I'm just right now. I'm the just only right now. You are correct. Just the only you may not. Yeah. Um, you may not be the first, but we still, we need, still need some representation out there. <laughs> uh, but to your point, like for me, and I, I tell my athletes this all the time, like, you know, we always ask, one of the things I always do with my athletes is I ask them, what's your why? Like, why do you play college basketball? Uh Why Why do you want to come to, you know, the university of Nebraska? Uh, And in that conversation, what I try to do is also share with them what my, what my why is. And the biggest motivation for me, again, coming from Canada, moving down to the South, I was at a rural uh, campus uh, just North of Tampa, um, a small private Catholic institution. And my experience as a college athlete was there wasn't someone like me <laughs> that I could have gone and talked to, that I could have gone and vent to. And right. that's not to say that I didn't have someone, but again, I think for representation and, you know, I guess it being balanced in regards to, okay, if the, if the population of the athletes look one way, then why isn't that also represented right. on, within administration or within coaching staff? Right. Um, my why has been, to be for my athletes what I wish I had when I was an athlete because I didn't make the greatest of choices, but I also didn't have someone that could have mentored me or, Correct. Uh, you know, <laughs> giving me that guiding hand when I needed it, when I was stepping in the wrong direction, if you will. Yep. Um, so for me, you know, it's interesting. And again, like, I've been doing this for a while and the conversations that I'm able to have with my athletes and the way that it's received, uh, because they know where it's coming from. They, they, they look across and they can say, okay, well, I know what your background is. I know what your experience was. I know where you came from. I know what your family life is like. And it's pretty similar to mine. Maybe you might have something to say that might be of value. Correct. Uh, Correct. And And it's just, it's that familiarity, you know, when you, you may not know the person, but you're technically from the same community, you know, they, they will see you as a father figure. Um, they will straighten up when they get the look. <laughs> you know what I mean? They know, but they also know what the look is. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Like, boy, you better get it together. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Not everybody can pull off the look, you know? <laughs> right, right. Look, I'm still practicing mine. I have a three-year-old, so I right. practice on him every chance I get. <laughs> but no, it's so important to, and you, you're right, to know your why behind everything um which is ex- exactly one of the reasons why I wrote the book what are you sporting about because it it asks you to truly just think about your purpose what is your purpose in all of this um being an athlete is literally one hat that you will wear in your entire life one hat 
out yeah. of however many things that you may do and become. And so I do feel like it's still a beautiful opportunity to be an athlete, to go to college and meet different people. You know, it can take you all types of places. It can take you around the world, but what is your purpose behind it? Yes. And um, athletics should be something that help to propel you, if not into your purpose, but to help you definitely work through that purpose for whatever, per- whatever reason you, you know, you have in this life. So you know, one of the things I think, and again, most, most athletes, if they ever think of, okay, I, I played it, you know, all my life, you know, elementary school, middle mm-hmm. school, high school, I got the opportunity to go to play college. And then after they get done in college, the first thing they think about is, well, I want to go play pro. Now, when you're younger and you don't really know, you know, how talented you are, how talented you could be, it's it's all dreams, right? Right. Um, as you get a little bit older, you know, reality start to set in. You realize where you're at in the totem pole in regards to talent, you know, in your region, in your country, in your state, you know, whatever it is. Um, maybe the professional is not an option for you. And for me, what I've tried to show is, okay, yeah, I started off as an assistant coach and and I did that, but I made a personal choice to pivot into an area where I felt like I could, I could bring the most value. And I've just been passionate about strength and conditioning. It's, it's, I know what it did for me from an athlete standpoint, from a development from high school to college, my career during college, I know what it's like, you know, for me, it's a lifestyle, but I guess what I try to do is, all right, so you, you know you're not going to play pros, but you know you want to still be involved in college athletics. All right, well, have you ever think, thought of being a strength and conditioning coach? Have you ever thought about being an athletic trainer? Have you ever right. thought about being an athletic director? <laughs> right, because, I mean, you can still do things in athletics. Yes. But I think sometimes we have athletes who get so hung up on pro, that's like just, that's it. That's mm-hmm. not it. You can still, if your dream is to be in sports, or be in pro sports. Maybe it's maybe you're just not playing the sport, right. but maybe you are in administration, which is a great thing, actually, because there definitely needs to be representation there too, you know. Um, but I, I think, yeah, you're right. People need to find a deeper conversation within themselves, especially once they're at that age and that level, to really think about what is it that you truly want. Pro sports may not give to you what you really, really want. Yeah. And I tell my athletes all the time, like, you know, I'm, I'm not out there on the floor with you, but I'm literally on a daily basis reliving yeah. a college experience. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm yeah. getting to be in a weight room with athletes, uh, you know, at the college ranks. I'm getting to train them. I'm getting to teach them, you know, a, 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 a work ethic, a mental approach, a toughness, physical right. and mental. Uh, and how does that translate into the real world? Uh, how can I use this when I'm learning here in the weight room when I have step out of the basketball court? More importantly, how can I use this when I step out of the facilities and I'm walking to my class and I've got to deal with a professor who's not <laughs> absolutely you know, not easy to work with? Uh, how can I then pivot that into a career and how can I apply? So it's, it's for me, it's life training. It's not necessarily it strength training. It it's really life really training. Is. Um, and again, you, you're, you're, you know, if we're going, if we're pivoting back to you know the state of America and the state of you know, the black experience in America and, and, and giving our athletes a, a toolbox to kind of navigate and move through, you know, whether it's being the mental aspect of the toughness or the physical toughness or the, I, I, I tell them, you know, you got to put on an armor <laughs> when you get out there yeah. in the world. Uh, yeah, you get yeah. to work on your mind, you get to work on your body, but when yeah. you step out there, you got to actually put it into practice and, and there's no whistle. There's no timeouts. You know what I mean? Like right. it's really when you step out there. So that is that's real that's real stuff yeah. it really is and it's great advice because it's true i mean there's no there's not going to be i mean i guess you could have a coach um <laughs> in the game of life yeah, yeah. um but you know you don't have anyone really keeping you accountable except for you so you know things are going to get hard people are going to say no things are not going to go the way that you want them to go or the way that you plan but it's essential that the athlete pick themselves up and just keep keep going. Yes, for sure. Yep. Well, Coach Stewart, I definitely appreciate you for taking the time out to speak with us today and share a little bit about your history and how you got uh, to Nebraska as a strength and conditioning coach. Um, I love everything that you're doing and all of the quality mentorship that you're providing. Keep it up. Keep it up because I know these athletes could, could use it and can use more people like you. Thank it was you a very pleasure much. with you being here. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. 
Thanks for joining us this week on What Are You Sporting About? podcast. Make sure to visit our website, prosportlawyer.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite platform is so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or iHeartRadio. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like the show, you might want to check out our book, What Are You Sporting About? Attorney Savania DeBarros is available for private consulting at sldebarros.com. And remember, we're here to educate, support, and guide you in your journey to success because we're all sporting about something.